friends, I welcome you to the next part of this lecture on Pauline theology. Today we are going to discuss about Paul's understanding of the last days, what we call eschatology. The word eschatology simply means the study of last days. So what we are trying to understand today is how did Paul understand um, the last days idea? What are the unique features of his thinking? Where did he get this idea and how did he modify that in accordance to his newfound faith in Jesus? Is eschatology unique to Pauline understanding? Some of these questions we will deal and then we will try to understand what did Paul say or teach about the last days. Eschatology is not a unique idea to Paul because even before him, Jesus himself has taught about the last days, what will happen at the end of the ages. Now that means that within the first century Jewish community, in the Jewish society, there was a clear-cut understanding about the last days. However, there are multiple ways of understanding what will happen. But it is clear that every Jew shared this idea of the last days. Now it is in that context we need to locate Paul uh, to explain his understanding of the last days. You know, in Daniel chapter 12 verse 2 we read about the last days and probably the idea related to the resurrection of the good and wicked both perhaps finds it roots there in Daniel 12 too. However, it is again debated. It can be used otherwise also to explain the idea. And now if Paul was a Jew and he encountered Jesus on the way to Damascus, what impact did conversion have or Jesus' appearance to him on the way to Damascus have is very important for us to understand. Eschatology is one of the most important idea which underwent radical change as a result of his encounter with Jesus on the way to Damascus. Until now, for Paul as a Jew, eschatology was the hope of resurrection on the last days. As a Jew, he understood the beginning of the history progressing continuously in a single line and moving towards the culmination. And at the end, he believed that when the Messiah will return, that will be the end. When Messiah, the Jewish Messiah will interfere in the human history, that will be the end of the human history. And from there on, a new age will begin. So it was linear understanding of the history. But as Paul, the Jew, encountered Jesus, and from there onwards, his faith journey undertakes a radical shift, although not to the opposite direction, but still it takes a new diversion from that point onwards. His understanding of the human history itself undergoes major change. What he understood as a linear growth of history from the point of creation towards the culmination of the human history at this final point, when the Messiah will come and interfere in the human history in a decisive manner and a new age will become. Now for Paul, because that Messiah is identified as Jesus and he knows that now Jesus who appeared to him on the way to Damascus is that Messiah for whom as a Jew he was waiting. For the few in the future because he has already come and he has already interfered in the human history in the decisive manner it means in the coming of Christ already what he anticipated expected in the future is now pulled back into the present history so in the coming of Christ the eschatological era has already begun for Paul it is at that moment Onwards, Paul feels that it is not the linear movement of the history towards the end of the human history and the beginning of the new age, but he thinks that now the age to come is now pulled back 
to the present and there is a time period of time that he is living and the time thereafter and the period that we are living is the period where this overlapping is happening where the human history is continuing as it is but the expected age to come is pulled back into the human history so there is a repetition taking place there is an overlap there's a human history is there and the age to come has overlapped so this tension has made him to understand the difficulty of understanding Christian life as completely holy life but at the same time his struggle with the sinful flesh that he inherits for Paul it is this period which is already eschatological in its beginning is the period where the where a Christian is struggling to live up to his higher call in Christ but because he belongs to the sinful age he is unable to fulfill that completely in his flesh it is here that the law fails to fulfill what it was expected to do and it is here in this eschatological period of overlapping a period of time that the grace is experienced that a person is not able to live up to this standard but the grace is provided for him or for a sinful being who believes in Jesus to try moving out of this sinful realm towards fulfilling the higher call of living up to the kingdom values now if that is the understanding of Paul that the present history has undergone a radical shift by the coming of Christ himself the first fruit of that eschatological beginning is the outpouring of the Spirit that the Spirit is given the day of Pentecost shows that that eschatological experience of the age to come is now made true partially by the outpouring of the Spirit in Christ Jesus for every believer in the church to experience that so that the age to come and the life in that it is partially experienced here and now in the spirit in Christ Jesus Jesus now for Paul is that Messiah the Son of God for whom he waited earlier but now that Jesus has already come that is his first coming but then this Jesus who has now come already as the Messiah will return back for Paul so Paul now believes that every believer in Christ including himself this Jesus who has already resurrected from the dead will return back and that he calls it as parousia in this parousia when Jesus appears extraordinary events are going to take place in history with where he uses a lot of apocalyptic language but the primary thing that he wants to say is that at this point of Jesus' return the dead in Christ will be raised now this is the most important point that he addresses to the Corinthians Paul had actually taught them a few things but Corinthians had now by now already got an understanding of a over realized eschatology that already the resurrection has taken place in Jesus but now correcting that Paul goes on to explain that no when resurrection will happen just as Jesus in Jesus there was just as in Jesus resurrection has already happened in future at Parousia when resurrection will happen we all will attain a new body which he calls it as a spiritual body now in Jewish understanding human body is an animated body not like Greeks understanding but now Paul is saying that in resurrection when you attain that spiritual body it will be very different from the present body that you have however the mystery of the spiritual body is not very clear to us scholars and theologians have debated so much to understand what would be like that body but we do not know one thing is clear for Paul this body is beyond decay and destruction unlike the present body 
that will be decaying and dying off in this world now one of the most important one of the most important um, topic related to resurrection paul deals in thessalonians we all know paul in his second missionary journey had come and actually preached the gospel to the thessalonians but after his sudden departure from thessalonica some problems had taken place there and as part of that some of the christians also had died by now the problem was that now the thessalonians who got only partial teaching about the last days paul is now going on to explain to them what will be it like on the last day when parousia will happen the question that was raised to paul by the thessalonian believers perhaps were twofold one was at christ parousia what will be the lot of the believers who have already died before jesus returns and the second question was when will the parousia be expected when should we expect jesus to come back uh, the second question when would jesus come back paul almost repeating the teachings of jesus says that it is a mystery he will come like a thief he will come secretly on some day so the thessalonian believers had to live every day in preparation to meet that messiah or their savior who will return in glory just like he says in first thessalonians chapter 4 verse 14 and also he teaches later on first corinthians 6 14 about the coming of jesus but the first question that we raised that that they raised probably which was what will be the lot of those believers who have already died before the coming of jesus what will happen to them now paul says they do not worry about them they will not be at loss in any way compared to those who will survive till the day of jesus return he tells them that they who have already slept in the lord will rise up from their grave and the ones those who are already living at the time or those who are already alive at the return of christ will undergo transformation and then they will be taken up in the coming of christ along with his angels now this is at this important point the question of this corinthians about the what kind of body that he teaches becomes important those who uh, resurrect and those who undergo transformation both will have a unique body which he calls it as a spiritual body the actual composition of what this spiritual body means is not known theologians and scholars have tried their best to understand or to explain it however paul is not clearly explaining what does it mean but one thing is clear this body that one will attain at the coming of second at the coming of jesus by undergoing that transformation is a body that is beyond decay and destruction so what happens at the death again for paul death is actually transition from this materialistic world into the next phase of existence for him this world death is not an end into it but it is a beginning into a new eternal life at death it is understood as the one receives that spiritual body which will be different from the present body he begins in second corinthians chapter 5 verse 1 following that some kind of new embodiment is necessary at death and that embodiment is available at resurrection for him a body of some kind was essential to personality so as a jew paul understood that the mortal body of the present form will be exchanged for an immortal body 
but he sees the resurrection principle to be already at work in the people of Christ by the power of the spirit who indwells them in some sense in some sense the spiritual body of the coming age is already formed while the outer man as he teaches in um, second Corinthians chapter 5 the outer man is already decaying the inner man is renewed and restored so this is the experience of a believer in Christ in this overlapping eschatological era that the hope of resurrection that is in the future is already experienced in the inner transformation of or inner strengthening of the person but the physical body undergoing decay and destruction for Paul it is very clear in 2nd Corinthians chapter 5 that in the present he longs that this mortal body may be left and he will be inheriting or he will be receiving that heavenly body or he will be covered by that heavenly body he doesn't want to be in nakedness nakedness in the old testament refers to shame and guilt now what paul is saying that when we will inherit that heavenly body we will be covered from our guilt and shame and that heavenly dwelling will guard us or protect us from that judgment it is not at death but at the parousia that those without the house made with the hand will be found stripped and naked those who do not have this experience in Christ they will be found naked but those who have a resurrection experience already in Christ will not be found naked on that last day that is why second Corinthians chapter 5 verses 1 to 10 he compares he explains both uh, um, both uh, forms of existence the physical and the spiritual body that one would attain on the last day now what happens at the second coming of Christ what will happen what are the events that will take place at the return of Christ in the study of first Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13 to 17 it is very clear later on that a few things that will take place surely in relation to the return of Christ there are three important words that we must take note of number one it is parousia parousia simply refers to the second coming of Christ although it is also a technical term in the Greek or Roman world which refers to the return or coming of the Roman official parousia in the New Testament is used in technical sense referring to the coming the return of Christ Jesus now Paul in Philippians also he refers to this experience Philippians chapter uh, chapter 4 he refers to this experience since the ascension of Christ is pictured seated at the right hand of God and will visit the earth again in personal presence of the end of the again in personal presence of the end of the age in power and glory to raise the dead in Christ as he teaches in first Corinthians chapter 15 verse 23 to gather his people to himself and to destroy evil you find about these things in 2nd Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 1 and in 2nd Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 8 the second important word that he uses is apocalypsis actually what is apoc apocalypsis is a disclosure disclosure of a mystery now when the Christ shall return it will be actually also the unveiling of the hidden mystery that is his apocalypse will be revealing to the world the power and the glory that are now of Jesus alone second Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 7 thus the second coming is closely linked to his exaltation actually his return in power and glory 
is apocalypse which is not anticipated by others for he as he suffered and died in his incarnation but this is going to be a mystery this is going to be a great revelation to the rest the third thing is epiphany meaning appearing jesus what paul is trying to say is that jesus will visibly appear before his people at his return this term is largely limited to the um, pastoral epistles but its twofold use illustrates the close relationship between the two coming now what is the background of this whole teaching eschatological uh, the teachings about eschatology is very closely associated to the apocalyptic language a lot depends upon the apocalyptic language that was in use in the first century in the jewish society and a lot of this language is also borrowed from the old testament language of theophany the appearance or manifestation of god paul borrows those languages from the from his jewish background and he brings that into use in teaching his believers about the second coming of christ remember this is the place where you find paul's pharisaic faith in the resurrection continuing in his christian understanding also as you all know sadducees did not believe in the physical resurrection of human beings but it was pharisees who believed so for paul as a pharisee earlier in his jewish faith now who becomes christian by encountering the resurrected jesus it is not difficult to believe that by the resurrection death and resurrection of jesus it is assured to the rest of the humanity that death is not the end but just as christ has died and resurrected so also we would be those who believe in christ would be raised death is not an end in itself and jesus resurrection is an absolute assurance of that hope now this is not merely hope this is actually experience in christ jesus which partially a believer experiences by his life in the spirit when holy spirit he receives he experiences by living in the spirit partially this resurrected this glorious existence an important aspect of this or an important implication of this faith in the last days of paul is about the destiny of the christians uh, of the jews who did not believe in jesus paul says paul believed and taught in romans chapter 9 to 11 that those who have not believed in christ till now these jews will return to christ at the end so their un present unfaithfulness is not god's ultimate rejection of his people because god is not unfaithful to his covenant with the old test uh, of with the, um, uh, uh, god is not uh, unfaithful to his covenant to his people but he will bring them back and that will happen when christ shall return those who have rejected jesus will look at him and will understand that he is our messiah repent and come back so in a sense paul as a jew who believed in jesus second coming struggled with the understand struggled with the problem of the rejection of this messiah whom he had met on the way to damascus and uh, by the jews and he is concerned about their fate what will happen to them at the end and paul rationalizes that they will return now in the present the unfaithfulness of the jews has actually paved way for the gentiles who are not sons of or daughters of abraham to now
come in Christ and receive the blessings promised to Abraham here and now. So the partial or the temporary rejection of Christ by the Jews or their unfaithfulness is actually paving way for others, non-Jews to come into Christ. But it is not a rejection of the Israel. At the end, because the covenantal faithfulness of God continues with Israel, Israel will return back and look to the Messiah whom they have rejected in the past. And for Paul, that is very important. Although he called himself as an apostle to the Gentiles, Paul constantly struggled with this, with this problem of the rejection of Christ by the Jews. What will happen at the end when the consummation will take place? The goal of consummation, that is the coming of Christ, the end of the human history for Paul is simply restoration of everything to un into Christ, to, to God. What is God doing through this human history? It is not mere salvation of the fallen human beings, but by that, by the death of Jesus Christ and through this period of overlapping period of eschatological time and human history, God is actually leading the entire creation to that point of culmination when the whole fallen creation will be restored back to himself. And that is possible only by Christ. That is why in Romans chapter 8, he speaks about the groaning of the creation. The entire creation in the present is groaning for redemption. Because in the original plan of God, sin was not there in creation. But man's or human being's fall into sin has actually brought curse upon the whole creation. And now the salvation of human being also has impact upon the entire creation that the whole thing would be restored back in that perfect relationship with God himself in Christ Jesus. And that would be the time when the last enemy, death, as he speaks in 1 Corinthians 15, 25, the death would be finally defeated. Corruption will be removed from creation. Everything will be back, restored back into perfection. Every form of imperfection will be removed. And Christ will, God will establish, God the Father will establish his kingdom upon this earth. And it is at that moment that the judgment will take place. And through judgment, God will purge the entire creation, including human beings, of all the sinful elements. He will punish the unbelievers and the sinful ones. And he will redeem and restore the repented ones into a perfect fellowship with him. And that is the point when the whole creation will be declared justified. Human beings will be justified by the death of Jesus Christ. In Christ Jesus, they will be justified on that final day of judgment. And from there on, we shall live, fulfilling the hope that we nurture now with our God, with Christ Jesus, in God the Father's presence. And that is what the Christian hope is. Our dear and near ones who have died in Christ already, we shall meet them on that day when he will call with the sound of trumpet everyone out of the grave and we all shall undergo a transformation in our physical body receiving a new spiritual body beyond our explanation today to get into that eternal life where God shall God will restore us back into the sinless state he will restore the entire creation into that wonderful fellowship with him. And that is what Paul taught about the last days. There may be many other issues that we need to handle in relation to Paul's understanding of eschatology. But I believe and I understand that this much understanding is very basic for our understanding of Paul's idea on eschatology. And with that, we can get into some other real issues about his understanding of salvation, 
sin, Christ, Holy Spirit, life in Christ, and many other topics can be dealt very meaningfully. If eschatology can be understood by us in its fullest extent. I personally value eschatology as a very important idea to understand the rest of Pauline theology. And so I think we must make every effort to get the idea of eschatology at the best for us today to understand the remaining theological themes of Paul in the future videos.